if you're like me and you're now working from home as a designer, you might be wondering, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna run design reviews? How am I gonna collaborate with my design peers while working from home? I thought the very same thing, and so I'm gonna share some of the things that I've been doing in this video, so stay tuned. events a lot of people are now working from home due to advice from the world health organization and also from local governments and countries so please follow the advice of your local government and the who organization as of last week we've been recommended to work from home and i will probably be working from home for the next month or so and up until mid april right now but who knows what's going to happen it could be longer but when i first started working from home last week i was like, how am I gonna pull off design reviews, peer designing, collaborating with my design peers while we're no longer face-to-face -face in an office? For some of my design peers, this is their very first time working from home. And so we've kind of had to come up with our own working from home culture, which if you've worked at a place that fosters working from home and remote work, then you probably already have this and it's not new to you. But for a company the size of Uber that I work at, this is totally new for us. We don't have this working from home or remote culture. And so as a design team, we're trying to figure out what this means, how are we gonna run our design reviews, how are we gonna stay up to date and sort of keep the, the culture and the camaraderie going as a team while we're all working from home. So here are some of the things that we have been doing so far. Now our design tool of choice is Figma. So this is already a great setup for remote collaboration. Now if you haven't heard of Figma before, it is a drawing and design tool, but it's completely based in the cloud. So no matter what operating system you have or what computer you use, Anybody can download and use Figma in the browser or with its desktop tool. Now Figma is great for this kind of collaboration because everything is in the cloud. So we can both be in the same design file at the same time. And some really nice features that I've been using since we've been going remote is in particular the ability to follow uh, my design colleagues in the file. Now you can easily do this by going up to the top right within a file and you will see avatars of the people that are currently in a file. And if you actually click on one of those avatars, you are now officially following that person throughout the file. So this is really handy if I'm trying to walk through a problem or doing a design review or something like that and I want people to follow along where I'm looking. I can just ask them to click on my picture and then now they'll be following me throughout the file. Figma also has a really great commenting feature, which we've been using more and more since going remote. You can leave a comment just by clicking on the comment icon and then leaving a comment on the file. You can leave it directly on an element or on an artboard or just leave it floating somewhere. And you can also tag people, leave some reactions, things like that. Now to view the comments that you have in a file, just click C on your keyboard or tap C on your keyboard, I should say, and you will see all of the comments in this file. Now since going remote we've been using commenting a lot more as it's a good asynchronous way to leave thoughts or give feedback on a design whereas in the past we kind of did this a little bit more in person or when we walked through uh, a design review in person or a crit or something like that now we're like more actively seeking out feedback asynchronously and people are leaving that feedback in the form of comments. Another tool we've been using a lot of in the last week or so is Whimsical. Now this is a really great low fidelity design tool where you can create wireframes, you can drag and drop little sticky notes, create flows, things like that. And this has been a great almost whiteboard for us if we want to jam on an idea together. Typically we'd usually do that in person in a meeting room at a whiteboard uh, or sketch it out on a piece of paper in front of us or something like that. But now with Whimsical we can easily do that virtually and remotely. This is a great tool regardless of if you're remote or not. We also use this tool quite a lot when we do uh, design sprints but I've just found that we've been using it a little bit more since going remotely to kind of visualize our ideas. The next tool that we're using is Google Jamboard. Now this again is a whiteboarding tool, but more whiteboarding in the traditional sense of like getting a pen and writing or drawing something on the virtual whiteboard. Now Google does offer Jamboard as an actual like hardware device, but you can also use it virtually and remotely in your browser. You can draw anything, you can insert sticky notes, you can drag and drop images in. It's very similar to Whimsical. Now, personally, I do like Whimsical a little bit 
better. But if you don't have access to Whimsical and you have a G Suite account at your company that you work at, Jamboard is free to use so it's a great alternative. Now the next tool that we use most heavily is Zoom and we use this for all of our conference calling, meetings, everything that involves some sort of phone call or screen sharing or group hangout. Now during this period you're probably going to be sending out Zoom links or requests to meetings pretty frequently, maybe more frequently than normal. So I really really suggest creating your own personalized Zoom short link. So to do this, go to your Zoom profile settings on the web. Here you can edit your personal meeting ID to a number that you remember. This is not my phone number for context, so don't try to call me on this. Then you can also add a personal link. So for me, I just make this my internal company username so that it's really, really easy to remember. Then I can now just send this link to anybody at the company and they can just join my Zoom, which makes it really, really easy and really, really quick to just quickly jump on a call. The second tip I want to share here about Zoom is how to turn that link into a shortcut. Now, I only have the tips here on how to do this on Mac because I don't use PC, but I'm pretty sure you can do this on PC as well. Just go and Google it, you'll figure it out, I'm sure. So to do this, open up your system preferences, then go to keyboard, text, and then click on the little plus icon here to add a new text shortcut. Now I'm going to use the shortcut my zoom, but you could use whatever you want. And then what I want this to shortcut to is my personal zoom link. So I'm going to copy and paste that over here. Now, whenever I type my zoom, it's just going to auto complete or auto magically turn that into my actual zoom link. It takes away all of that friction. The third and last thing I want to share about Zoom is virtual backgrounds. Now this has been in Zoom for a while but we only kind of discovered it and started using it once we went remotely because we all suddenly were joining Zoom on our own and suddenly we had 20 people on a Zoom call. And anyway, virtual backgrounds have made it really really fun for us and almost a little bit challenging. You can easily create a virtual background by opening your Zoom preferences navigating to virtual background and then here you can drag and drop your own backgrounds to use when you're on video. Now I just went to Unsplash which is a great uh, Creative Commons free but good stock photography website and just searched a bunch of backgrounds that I wanted to use for my Zoom calls. I drag and dropped them into Zoom and then now whenever I'm on a call I just cycle through the different backgrounds. Keeps it kind of interesting, keeps it kind of fresh. People comment on my backgrounds often so it's just a fun and personal way to make meetings a little bit more entertaining. We've also leveled this up in my team by adding a challenge onto this where for our team meetings we're going to start each one uh, with a prompt. So the prompt might be uh, what scares you the most or what's your dream destination or what is your favorite food? And then this prompt uh, is to encourage you to choose a virtual background that reflects that prompt. It's fun, it's light, it gives us something to look forward to. Uh, it's just another nice way to make meetings more fun while we're all remote. So those are my main tips for collaboration amongst your team and how to sort of stay in touch with your other design colleagues. I do have a couple of extra more fun things to share about how to stay connected with your team while you're working remote. Not design related, but equally as fun. The first is this neat DJ app called Jukebox. Now here you can connect your Spotify account and you can invite other team members to join the room, I guess, the DJ room, and you each have a turn DJing. So you can choose a song, add it to your queue, and then it'll cycle around the people in your team and you'll each get a chance to play a song. Uh, people can upvote your song, downvote your song, there's a chat. It's kind of nice to just have that like on in the background as something that you're all collaborating to and it's also a nice way to discover music from your colleagues. Next is Movespring and this is a tool that I have really really grown to love even though I've only used it for like less than a week but we were really looking for a way to stay connected as a team while working from home but to also stay fit and healthy while we're working from home. So we thought a steps challenge would do just the trick. So Movespring allows you to set a challenge invite your team members and there's also a leaderboard where you can see who is winning and you can also drill down and see average steps and different views and then there's also a fun little side challenge in this case we picked 30 minutes of activity a day I think it's a fun way to keep you active and stay connected we've also introduced daily chat and choose which is basically a virtual lunch we just set up a one hour zoom call that's on every day from 12 until 1 you can drop in whenever it's totally optional you can bring your lunch it's just a chance for us to chat over lunch and say hi to each other face to face 
but virtually. <laughs> Lastly, we're also maintaining our board games that we do as a team every Thursday by doing it virtually. Uh, we use Slack now for messaging and Slack surprisingly has a lot of cool integrations. So we can maintain our board games by doing it virtually in Slack. We love code names. we play this a lot as a team. So now we're actually trying out the virtual version in Slack and again, another really fun way to keep things light, stay connected, and maintain your rituals that you do in the office, but now doing it virtually. That is all the tips that I have for now. Now you notice that I did not go in depth in this video about tips for like working from home and how to like stay focused and not be distracted and maintain work-life balance. There is a lot of articles and a lot of videos out there by experts who I are much more experience in this area than I am. I do not work from home on a regular basis, so I'm leaving it to the experts. Just purely wanted to share how we are handling this transition period as a non-remote design team suddenly becoming remote basically overnight. So hopefully these fun things I've shared are helpful for you too if you're in a similar situation with your team. Good luck out there, stay safe, stay healthy, take care. See you later. Bye.